Welcome, in this Gibbs Cam video, we're gonna show you how to deburr cross holes. This will be in a three axis mill, and we'll also show you how to do it in a five axis mill. As you can see here, I have my holes are just straight up and down, nothing irregular with it. And I have a cross hole that goes clear through the part. So of course, if we turn on edge selection, you can see we need to deburr the top edges. Very easy to do, and these cross holes here where it's more of a spline ellipse there and the holes down through here turn this off now we're using a lollipop cutter 5 8 lollipop cutter with a quarter inch shank there as you can see here and we're using the five axis module here so if I bring up my five axis module here let me just bring this one up here just to give you an idea. And we'll start from here. So of course we're going to be on the options general. We're doing an XY plane. I don't need 3D cutter comp on. And click on surface pass. Now we're going to select, going to select deburring here as you can see here. So the first thing it's going to ask you move this over a little bit. You have a couple of choices here on how you want to do the edge. You can have auto detect or user defined. I'm going to click on user defined and there's of course advanced too if you want to uh, do some other angles here, uh, limited detection, things like that. But for this part we don't need to do that. And uh, path perimeter, edge shape, I'm just going to do constant width. You can see you have constant width or constant depth. I'm just going to choose constant width, 20 thou. Inner corners, there's really no inner corners on this, so I don't need to really worry about that too much. You have trim or inner corners. You can see the pictures as you click on them. And climb and number of cuts along edges, flat. And you can do rounded, as you can see. So rounded, if you do rounded, you can see it's going to round the edge there. But all I'm concerned about is deburring on this, so I'm just going to keep it flat and just one cut. And we'll leave everything else there the same for right now. So on the part surfaces, let's of course click on this. And of course you want to be in face selection. You don't want to select the whole part. You want to be on face selection. So first thing I'm going to do is probably, let's just deburr the top ones, which will be the easiest one first. So I'm going to click on here, hold the control key down, select the surfaces here. I'm going to click OK. Now on the user defined edges, I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to turn on edge selection. So I can select these three edges and click OK. And now we'll just click on do it. And as you can see, I have my toolpath there. Let me just get rid of these other two, for instance. And so everything looks pretty good there. Now, one thing that a lot of people forget is the five axis module has some really good um, error detection. So to uh, see what errors, if you're not getting a tool path, which it doesn't look like I'm getting one here, I see the directions, but I don't see a tool path. I'm gonna click on this push pin here to bring this up. And we'll expand this here so we can see any errors we're getting. I'm not getting any tool path there, so I'm gonna click on this link. And we're gonna change some of these things out here. Now I'm gonna put like, 10 thou here and minimum 9 thou here and I'll just click on uh, we'll just redo that and you're gonna see it says error occurred now if I expand this out a little bit more you're gonna see exception raised in calculation routine lead in out radius must be greater than quarter of the tool radius so a quarter of the tool radius if you take uh, 5 eighths of an inch and uh, of course 625 divided by 4 and we get 0.156 but it says a quarter of the tool radius so I'm going to divide by 2 so we have to have about 78 thousandths approximately so I'm going to have the radius here I'm just going to say 85 thou maybe minimum we'll just say 7 well probably needs to be uh, more than a quarter so I'm just going to say 80 thou there so let's redo that and now you'll see I have a tool path there. So let's do the second deburring. So again, I'm going to 
going to open up my process here. And by the way, I'm doing a three axis on this part here. And you can select the, you're gonna, you wanna make sure these are clear as well. So right now I have 10 thou on the back clearance on the holder, which we really don't, not concerned about. It's way up out of the part. And holder front clearance, as you can see here, and shaft clearance. Now, of course, a shaft clearance, if you put too big of a um, number in here and your uh, shaft is way big, then, of course, you're not going to get a toolpath either or get an error in there. So the links look pretty well okay as well. So again, part surfaces. I'm going to click on the cross hole. As you can see, it goes through the part. The three upper holes. And we might as well do the three lower holes as well. You can separate them if you want, but it's totally up to you. First hold the control down. Now you can see I have everything selected that I want uh, Gibbs to deburr. So we'll click OK. And again, click on User Define Edges. I'm going to click on this edge, this edge, this edge. Of course, holding control down this edge, this edge, this edge. Click OK. And I believe everything else here is just fine. So we'll click Undo It. it takes a second and you can see we have a toolpath there and no errors there. So this is really good to bring up this because this error will tell you basically what you need to fix to get a toolpath on here. So if we run the toolpath, let's go to OpSim. So we have our op sim up. Let's run it. Rewind and let's run it. As you can see, let's do a little transparent tool there. And as you can see, this is the top. And I'm not doing any tilting. Of course, we can't anyway because this is just a three axis machine on this one. Next, we're going to go down inside the holes. And as you can see, nice deep bird holes. If we look at the different views, you can see this is a real easy way to deburr the holes. Of course, you need the five axis module, but the five axis module will also uh, run a tool path in three axis, four axis, or five axis. So even if you don't have a five axis machine, you can still use this in your three axis mill and do some really nice deburring on there. So the next one we're going to do is in a 5-axis machine, so let's bring that one up. So in this 5-axis part here, you can see I have a plane right here. If I go to my home view, you can see these holes are at an angle. Kind of go to a side view there, you'll see it a little bit better. So these holes are, if I change this to transparent, you can see this a little bit better. And here's a little bit uh, better view, uh, sliced in half, as you can see the holes go across. This one goes straight, but these two here go crosswise through the part. Of course, we have our side hole as well. So let's put this back and bring out our actual part here. Again, I'm using a 5 8 uh, lollipop cutter. Bring up my process here. Let's first go to our surface pass. Well, let's do our general first. And I want the tool to come in on my tilted plane here. As you can see, here's my tilted plane here. If I go to a home view, you're going to see that's tilted there. 
to go uh, perpendicular to the holes here, at least these two here. The other one will be straight. So let's first do uh, these uh, angled holes first. So if I click on the surface paths, you can see on the options I have tilted there. So on the surface paths, of course, deburring again, part surfaces. Make sure you have your face selection on. Select the cross hole. And then let's select the angled ones first. Let's just do these two. And let's get the inside of that one and inside of this one. Click OK. Next, we're going to do user defined edges. Turn on edge selection. Let's select this edge here, this one here, this one here, and this one here. Click OK. Uh, everything else is the same as the other part here. On the link, I have my lead in, lead out, uh, which should be good enough to clear the part there. Uh, all this has uh, stayed the same. Now on the tool axis control here, I have a tilt range checked, and I say I'm only going to do a minimum of 10 degrees and a maximum of 45 degrees on the tilt. That's going to keep my tool, um, especially the shaft of the tool, from uh, hitting the sides of the part as well. So let's click on do it. And you can see I have no errors down here. I have a tool path here. You can see that. If we do the rendering on this, you see I have it tilting. And the top there, next hole, I'm at my uh, angle. And of course, I'm, I give it a tilt range just so everything stays within the limits of my machine. And when it's on the, the fifth axis table, I'm not going to run into the table as it's tilt. So that's why I have a tilt range in here. So if I look at this, you can see nice deburring top and bottom. All right, let's do the next stop. Next process here, we're going to keep this on the XY plane. And again, tool axis control. Let's just choose an empty tile to get rid of everything up here. And I could still choose five axis simultaneous, even though it's just going to uh, stay pretty much straight up and down. Uh, axis control is fine there. I don't need a tilt range, but I can leave those in there. So let's click on part surfaces. So let's click on the inside again, except this time. Just select this one and the lower one. And we'll click on do it. Oh, one thing I forgot, of course, user defined edges. We need to redefine the edges again because we're cutting different holes. So click on this one, this one, click OK. Now let's redo that. And as you can see, I have a tool path there. Cutting that. Now the last thing is, of course, we're going to, going to do the top. So let's do part surfaces again here. And of course, three holes. And use to find edges. That one, that one, that one. Click OK and do it. And we have a tool path there. Okay, let's run the simulation all the way through now. There's my first angled hole. There's the angled hole through the top. Angled hole at the bottom. And the top. And of course, the middle one. Of course, I'm getting an air there, which is telling me my travel limit has exceeded. So let's stop this and figure out what went wrong with the last op here. So let's open up the last op. And we're on the XY plane, tool axis control. Let's uncheck this and let's do redo. And let's run it through again. 
We'll speed this up a little bit. And I have the same error again on the bottom here. So let's fix that. So if we open up the second process here, which is the straight hole through the middle there, let's go to our tool axis control and uncheck this and click on redo. And again, we have a tool path there. Let's run our simulation and let it run through again. And we should have everything should be just fine. Let's run a little bit uh, different rendering. So if we click on the POV lock, we've had this on fixed part. So the part was staying stationary while the tool moved around in fifth axis. Now we want to show it as if the uh, was in the machine. So now the part is going to move like it was in a five axis machine while the uh, spindle stays vertical. So let's click on POV lock to machine. Rewind. Play. Now you'll see it as if it was in a five axis machine. So we don't have too much of a tilt here. So you're pretty much assured you're not going to run into the table or anything like that. We'll speed that up. And there we go. Part looks really nice. Nice deburred. Of course, if you had a long enough tool you, and uh, clearance in your vise, you can go through and do the bottom as well. But we're going to leave this just like it is. So if we put a vise to it and put it in a five axis machine and rewind it and play. You're going to see how it reacts in a five-axis machine. Plenty of clearance on the tool as well as the shaft of the tool. And our part is finished as you can see. Change transparency there, and as you can see, we have a nice deburred holes on here. Let's just rewind it all the way back, and you can see it a little bit better this way. And that's how you do deburring on cross holes with a lollipop cutter in three axis or four axis as well and five axis machine. So thank you for watching.